Welcome back to a, uh, another section in Unit 4. Today we're going to talk about cell growth and cell size. And I have a question for you. Why do you think cells are so small? They never get big. Wouldn't it be strange if a cell, instead of multiplying and becoming a multicellular organism, like this little baby here, what if a cell just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger? Why doesn't it do that? Well, here is one important reason, and it's a really big reason. Surface area to volume ratio. You might think, why are we talking about this? This sounds a lot like math, but it's actually a really important concept that we're going to talk about. Let's look at a cube instead of a, a sphere or um, something that's cellular shaped. We'll just look at a cube because it's really easy to calculate its surface area and its volume. So let's talk about a cube's surface area. This funny little symbol, you may or may not have seen it, but you will eventually if you haven't seen it yet. It is the Greek letter, the capital letter, sigma, and it means the sum of. So here, this means the sum of what follows it. And when we talk about surface area, we can talk about the surface area of one side of the cube, and that would be the length times the width, okay? But we would like to know the surface area for the entire cube. So we want the length times the width of that side, plus the length times the width of that side, plus the length times the width of that side. And we have three more sides on the other side as well. So we're going to add together the length times the width of every single side in the cube. That gives us our surface area. Volume, you'll remember volume is simply length times width times height. So we have length times width times height, however you want to turn your cube and look at that. So I want you to think a little bit about mathematically what that means for us. If we have a ratio where we put surface area and we're comparing it to the volume, so that's the same as a fraction, surface area over volume, our surface area is increasing by some order of x squared. And the reason for that is because we're multiplying two variables together, the length and the width. So something times something else gives us a squared value. Our volume, on the other hand, is increasing by a factor of three. We're multiplying three things together, the length, the width, and the height. So those things multiplied together are giving us a factor of three. And if you'll notice, in our ratio, the surface area, as it's increasing, well, the volume is going to be increasing a lot more. And that's really important for us to remember. Now, this might seem like it has nothing to do with cells, but in fact, it really does. So let's go back to our cell idea and remember that cells metabolize when a cell has a greater amount of volume, there are more reactions that, occur, that are occurring inside of that cell. Um, if a cell also, you remember, uh, in order to have these reactions occurring, it has to have some surface area in order to exchange materials. Some materials exit and materials enter the cell that it needs that are vital to its metabolism. So. Um, remember that as we have more volume, more reactions are occurring, and it's going to need more surface area in order to carry out those reactions. Now, remember from our math, if we increase the volume of something, a cube, for example, our surface area is not going to increase by as much. So it does not keep up with the rate of increase that the volume would provide in this ratio. So as volume increases in our cell, there will be less surface area to exchange materials. What does that mean for the cell? Well, as our cell grows, our volume is getting larger, but our surface area is not getting proportionally as large. So there comes a point that there is no longer enough surface area to supply the raw materials to the cell's volume, and the cell can't get any larger. And that is why the surface area to volume ratio is so important, 
and that's why it's a limiting factor in cell growth. Now, I wanted to help you um, understand this by thinking about it a little differently. Um, do not get scared of the math or the numbers here. You certainly don't need to memorize them. And really what I'd like you to do is just think about what these numbers mean. You can pause the video, look at the numbers, think about what they mean. Um, in these diagrams here, we are going to keep the total volume from one to the next the same. And just this is a little aside. You may not may or may not be familiar with this unit. It's micrometers. It's a very tiny, tiny, tiny unit. There are 10 million micrometers in one meter, or 10 to the sixth micrometers in one meter. So it's just a very tiny unit, but that's it's the same throughout. So um, we're going to keep, though, the total volume the same from one diagram to the next. It's going to be 8,000 micrometers cubed for the volume. And what we're going to do is change the surface area. So here we have one large cube. And the length of one side of the cube is 20 micrometers. Its total surface area is calculated here. Remember, we have our 8,000 micrometers volume. Here is our surface area to volume ratio, 0 0.3. It's a pretty low surface area to volume ratio. What happens if we could somehow slice uh, this cube into multiple cubes? Instead of one cube now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cubes. Okay? Um, since we've sliced uh, each side in half, each individual cube is only 10 micrometers high instead of the 20. Okay, I'm sure you can see that. And the total surf surface area now has been recalculated. It's a larger surface area. Um, and we have the same volume. And our surface area to volume ratio goes up a little bit, 0 0.6. Now what if we really chop this cube up? We're going to chop it up into so many pieces that one single cube down here is two micrometers. Here is a recalculation of the total surface area in, on all the sides of all the cubes of all of this are added up. We get 24,000 micrometers squared. We have the same amount of volume and our surface area to volume ratio goes way up to 3.0. So um, the surface area to volume ratio, I just wanted to see for you to see how that changes um, as we increase um, one or the other variables. And what does this ultimately mean for our cells? Well, instead of growing larger and becoming one very giant organism, cells maximize their surface area to volume ratio, just as we saw in the last slide. They stay small, and they form multicellular organisms. And that is the answer to our initial question of why are cells small? If you'd like to think about some more things here related to this topic, consider what other factors might affect cell size and why. And I look forward to seeing you in class.